Well, hey there, Hardin Church family. Uh, welcome back to another Tuesday Talk. So last week, Pastor Chase kicked off a new series that we're going to be doing on these Tuesday Talks, uh, talking about the attributes of our Lord Jesus. Uh, talking about what, what it means for, for who Jesus is, right? All the different qualities and attributes about Him who make Him who He is. And so last week, uh, Pastor Chase talked about the holiness of Jesus. Right? A lot of times we think of the holiness of God, uh, but when we specifically focus on, the, on Jesus, uh, one person of the triune God that we worship, uh, we don't always think about His holiness. So I'm glad Chase went through His holiness and talked about that divine attribute of His. But this week, uh, we're going to focus on one of the attributes that He has in His humanity. As right? so we think through that uh, uh, hypostatic union, right, is what it's called, that Jesus is both fully God and fully man, right, 200%, not, not mixed with these different percentages. No, He's 100% man and 100% God. Uh, what is one of those attributes about His humanity that is important for us to know? Uh, before we get into it, I want you to think of this phrase. Uh, maybe you've said this before. Um, you've definitely heard it said before. Uh, and that phrase is this, been there, done that. Right? Maybe you've said this about uh, some instance in your life, talking to someone younger than you or, or one of your friends or whoever it was. And you see them in a situation or talking about a situation that you've done before. You've been there. And you say, been there, done that. Right? Whatever that means in that, in that connotation, in that context, right? you say that because you have been there in their shoes and know what that is like. And you've done it, whatever it is. Well, here we're going to see Jesus. And I've heard Brother Ricky say this about Jesus from this very text. Jesus has been there, but he hasn't done that. And the that in that situation is sin, right? In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, uh, the writer of Hebrews says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. So he's been there. He's been through the fire. He's been through the temptation right there in Matthew 4. He's been uh, led out into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. He's been tempted to the utmost, right? Yet without sin. He has been there, but he hasn't done that. You see, uh, when we say that to people, been there, done that, we, we offer them some advice. We give them some, some different ways that they could do better in that situation than we did. Or sometimes we just do it in mockery and we laugh at how bad they handled the situation. But that's not the case with Jesus. When, when he says that he has been there, he's been through the temptation but hasn't sinned, he's offering us something that, that we cannot offer each other. He says he is able to sympathize with our weaknesses, but he has never, ever sinned. He is sinless. The sinless man, the God-man Jesus, has been through temptations far greater than any of us could ever imagine, and yet he has never once fallen into that temptation. He is sinless. In this passage, the, the attribute we're going to focus on this week is His sympathy. Right? He's able to sympathize with us in our weakness because He Himself was beset with weakness. He was in His flesh. He was fully human as well as fully God. And, and because of that, His humanity, He was tempted to the utmost. And Jesus, he, he can say He's been there through the temptation, through the fire, but He can say He has overcame it. He did not fall into that temptation. He actually defeated sin and death on our behalf so that we no longer have to be underneath this, this sinful, uh, these sinful things. We can overcome temptation just like Jesus did. And there's another phrase that I want to point out that oftentimes we say to one another who are going through hard times. We say, I get what you're going through. I understand what you're going through. And maybe in some sense that's true, but but they really don't do that. Right? If you've gone through something hard, if you're battling a, a sickness, or if you've lost a loved one, or, or you're struggling with something, they can say, I, I get what you're going through. Maybe in a sense, but not fully. Not the way that Jesus does. Jesus can fully understand what you're going through because He Himself was tempted to the utmost. And, and I would like to say this, that Someone else who's gone through that situation that says, been there, done that, they've fallen when it comes to sin. 
No temptation uh, that has come to you is uncommon to man, right? We have all struggled with some of the same things, but we've all fallen into those things. Jesus has not. And that's why when he says we have a great high priest who's able to sympathize with us because he's been tempted as we are, but without sin, he is the sinless one. And you can turn to him, not just for advice, but for power, for resurrection power, to overcome sin, overcome temptations, that we can no longer have to be sold under sin and in slavery to sin. We can overcome these things. We're no longer sinners, but we're saints in Jesus. And because of our high priest, we can draw near to him. Because listen to what the next verse says. Let us then, because he has been tempted as we are yet without sin, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Right? We have a confidence, not grounded within ourselves, but within our great high priest, Jesus. Because of who he is, his attributes, his holiness, right? He's able to sympathize with us. And because of that sympathy, he says, I truly know what you're going through. Come to me and I will help you overcome this. I will give you the strength to overcome this if you will just come to me. So Harden Church family and whoever else is listening to this, I pray that you don't lean on your own strength, on your own understanding. You don't try and grit your teeth and get through a situation. No, you come to your Lord Jesus. Come to His feet. Go to His throne. And go to the one who knows what you're truly going through. Because He sympathizes with you because He has gone through some of these same things but never once sinned. So go to the sinless one and He will help you in your time of need. Have a great rest of your week.